Sejam muito bem-vindos ao Cultura de Excelência. Eu sou a Karen Ross, é um prazer receber vocês aqui. Aqui na Voito teremos encontros semanais onde vamos conversar com mulheres de todo o mundo sobre propósitos, melhores de processos e gentileza. Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Karen Ross and it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Here at Voito, we'll be having weekly meetings where we'll talk with women from around the world about purpose, process improvement, and kindness. And before we get started, I just want to remind everybody to download our fabulous handbook for the entire Cultura de Excelencia series. You can do that just by using the QR code that you see on the screen. You're going to find all of the insights from all of our fabulous guests that we're having through our 15 uh, episode web series, lots of other totally uh, fabulous information. So if you haven't already downloaded your handbook, make sure to use our QR code to do that today. Now, today I'm super excited about our episode of Cultura de Excelencia because we're having a Another fabulous Women in Lean guest, and this guest is a super, super important guest to me. We're going to be talking about um, how to um, help women reach the top of the organization and how organizations can um, encourage women to be in senior lean leadership positions. And the special guest we have today is Leslie Hankler. And as well as being a fabulous senior <laughs> lean leader at Trinet now and at a variety of other organizations. Leslie is actually my first lean teacher. So if it weren't for Leslie, I wouldn't be <laughs> sitting here talking to any of you today. So first of all, Leslie, welcome. Second of all, thank you. <laughs> And I would love it if you would tell people a little bit about yourself. Fantastic, Karen. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm always excited to talk to women about lean and about women in leadership, um, as well as kind leadership. So this is a fantastic opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Um, my background came from uh, Eastman Kodak Company where I was uh, a maintenance mechanic and a variety of non-traditional women roles and was given the opportunity to learn about lean manufacturing in Six Sigma. Um, I was in an industrial engineering role and they came and said, we're doing a lean implementation across the world for Kodak and we would like you to participate. So my first opportunity came because I had let folks know that I was interested in, in learning this and they chose me. So I was very, very excited and, and blessed for that opportunity. I worked all across the world for Eastman Kodak in film manufacturing, paper manufacturing, um, uh, computer-aided mammography machines, digital cameras, all of it. And through all of that, I was very, very lucky to have fantastic both male and female mentors and teachers who helped me to learn to be successful in the environment of lean. So, from there, I went to a back office, as you well know, at a company that we both worked at um, because I had an opportunity to take lean to the back office. And so I began that journey, I think, 15 years ago, two days ago, because uh, another friend of ours sent a note and said, this would be your 15 year anniversary if you were still here. So um, that, that's kind of my background and, and how I got involved in this. And I'm sure other stories will come out as we dialogue back and forth. Yes, and um, I think uh, there's actually a Brazil connection as well, isn't there, Leslie? There absolutely is. When I was doing the work at Kodak, I had an international group um, that was doing um, TPS and um, 5S across the nation, the world right, on their various machines. And uh, our good friend Gilson from the Sao Paulo 
um, Kodak plant at the time was our connection there. So we indeed do have a Brazil connection. <laughs> That's totally fabulous. And as Leslie said, we met because Leslie and I worked at the same company and she was the leader of Lean for that company. And I was in a, a local office far away from home office where Leslie was. And I was struggling on my own to improve processes because customers were unhappy with uh, the results that they were getting. And I met Leslie because as I was struggling, I reached out for help and Leslie called me up and kindly offered to help me. And I think that this is gonna be really so important to our conversation today about how do we pull women up through the organization? <laughs> we have women become leaders and that concept of helping other people is just so important. Absolutely, Karen, could not agree more. Um, as, as you know, part of my Kodak story was um, my first mentor, who was also a woman, um, a woman named Mary Osmulski, a fantastic lean leader who helped me at any point when I needed help in a, in a kind way, but also allowing me to learn and fail and grow from those opportunities. Um, and one of the things that she always and all of us that worked with her that she entrenched in us was that our first mission was to teach and to help. Um, because if we didn't teach and help and bring others with us, we could never do the transformation. So it was a, a key lesson. And I think that's woven all throughout uh, the Toyota production system and lean thinking, the need for us, those who have come before to mentor those and bring them along um, and, and actually to help the student become the teacher. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. So we're going to go for, uh, through some of the fabulous questions we have here. And I think it's going to be wonderful learning for all of the uh, wonderful people who are watching. So uh, a large part of leaders are still men. And I think wherever we look <laughs> in the world, we find this. Why is it still so difficult in organizations for women to reach senior leadership positions? Well, I, I think a big piece of it is, is an unconscious bias um, without being thoughtful about who we choose to be on our teams and who we choose to mentor, we tend to gravitate toward mentoring people like us. So if the bulk of the leaders are men through no male intent, pun intended, they may in fact <laughs> be choosing others like them. So men or people with a similar background as, a, as an engineer or um, a variety of things. And it, it's not purposeful. But for us to help women come through the ranks, I believe we need to be purposeful in thinking about who are we choosing on our team? Who are we pulling with us? Um, be they male or female. But the idea of rounding out a team, bringing diversity of thought and diversity of thinking diversity of people, backgrounds, and ideas, because that's how we make, in my opinion, the best strides forward. So I know I purposefully look for women within organizations to bring along, and then I encourage them to bring others along with them. Leslie, thank you so much. That was such a wonderful answer, and it really leads in well to our next question. And the next question is, how can companies open doors to ensure equity in teams? Karen, that's a great question. I think there's many different ways we can do it. We're seeing, at least in the U.S. right now, a huge focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion at the company level. And I think that that is a step to and toward making sure that teams, leader teams, um, that everyone has an opportunity and that we're consciously looking to get women and others um, of different backgrounds to be part of the work that we're doing. But I think as women in these businesses and men that are supportive of women in business, they need to particularly make a point of seeking out, finding people who are not being well represented and then bringing them in. It's, it's about making it conscious versus, 
versus unconscious and intentional to give those opportunities to people. So each person in an organization can see themselves in the leaders that they have. I think that's uh, that that's that's so important. And when we think about um, you know diversity and inclusion and equity, I also always like to talk with you, Leslie, <laughs> about people who are introverts and people who are extroverts as well, because oftentimes the very extroverted people, the people who are saying I want help, <laughs> I need help, are the people who uh, get more attention, but introverted people, and there are lots of women introverts, introverted people can be fabulous leaders as well. Absolutely, and uh, as an introvert, I'm biased, that I think introverts actually make better leaders. And I say that because one of the characteristics of an introvert is that you are more listening than speaking. And I think your bias is toward pulling ideas and thoughts from others. Um, so I know that there's tons of strengths in any style, but I think that mix, to your point, Karen, of introverts and extroverts, we need those people that are leading the charge and we need those folks that are really thoughtfully thinking about where are we going to take the charge and how do we get all the people aligned with us. Um, I think it's really important. And I think extroverts can appear, or introverts can appear extroverted. Actually, extroverts can appear introverted too as we learn to modulate our bias style toward a balanced style. Right? Many people will tell you, oh, Leslie's an extrovert. She'll talk to anybody. Um, that piece of me is true. The other side is how I get recharged is through reflection and quiet time. And so recognizing that people get recharged and participate differently, it's kind of like primary processors and secondary processors. As we work with teams, a lot of people need time to really think about it. They don't get their best ideas in the moment. They need to mull it over. That best idea comes when they're making supper or they're driving home. So the, the balance of giving people time to think as well as getting ideas in the moment because both will churn out some of the best ideas you're going to get, I think is another piece that's really important as we lead teams. I agree. And as the uh, secondary processor, <laughs> I can absolutely understand that. So thank you for so many great insights. And this that really leads us into the question because we really are all in this together. It's it's not only women who can pull up women through the organization, but how can male employees support the development of women in their teams? And you You've led so many teams and developed so many teams, Leslie. I'm so interested to hear what you have to say about this. Honestly, I think as a, as a man in an organization, my opinion is that consciously choose people who bring a balance that you need to your team. Um, as you're working with people that are on your teams, look not only within your team, but even outside your team. Are there other women in the organization who you might be able to, I'll say borrow or bring onto your team to give a perspective or work on a particular project and give them an opportunity to see if this work actually resonates with them and how they perform. Um, as women, we have an obligation, and, and as people, we have an obligation if we'd like to try something to tell our manager, to tell, tell our leaders, I would like to be involved in that. That may be uncomfortable, but if we don't tell them, they may not know. So we want to make sure we take our own responsibility personally to ask for opportunities. And then for all of us that are in leader positions to be genuine and look kindly across the organization and find people who are looking for those opportunities and give them chances to learn and grow. I love it. So, so, so many women have the purpose of becoming leaders. So many, so many women I know, you know, really in their heart, this is, this is what they want to do. What steps can we take to inspire them as women in leadership roles to develop and achieve that leadership? How can, how can we give them the confidence to do that? Well, there's lots of ways to do that. I think if you've got a good relationship with your leader, with your own manager, that you can ask them to give you opportunities. I would say there's tons of opportunities outside of where you work to practice leadership, um, whether it's at your church or your children's school or it's a women's group of some kind, like the women in Lean. 
um, we, we find people and we find groups where we get a chance and we can safely practice leadership, it builds confidence. And if you can build your confidence outside of work, that will make you more confident inside of work. So I would encourage women who are looking for those leadership opportunities, if you're not getting them in the place where you work, look outside for a place to practice, build your skills, gain your confidence, and then press them at work to give you an opportunity, knowing that you've got the skills personally, and it improves your probability of success. I agree. And, you know, in my new kind leader book, I talk about how throughout each of our day, we wear our leader hat and then we wear a follower hat and we switch between those. And so many women are already leading in so many different places. They're leading at home. They're, uh, you know, leading in activities that their children are doing after school or those kind of things. And they don't recognize those things as leadership. <laughs> but they are that they can then transfer back into those those skills they can transfer back into a work environment absolutely karen i think that that's a i think that's a great point is to recognize the leadership that you're already demonstrating and then think about how do you leverage that um as an informal leader um in the workplace because if you demonstrate as an informal leader that others will follow you. It will help those in leadership in your company recognize that people follow you and start to give you more opportunities. It Absolutely. doesn't have to be a formal leadership position to be able to practice those leadership skills and demonstrate your ability. Absolutely. Lots of times as women, we look at the job description and we say, oh, it says I need this in this leadership experience. And we say, well, we don't have that in that formal job role, yeah. but actually, you have it from a lot of other places, right? Absolutely. Um, all right. So now we're at uh, one of the, my favorite parts of uh, the show, which is the uh, questions from Voito students. And of course, since we want to help students learn and grow, I love these questions. So um, here we go with the first one. What was the biggest difficulty you, Leslie, faced in achieving lean leadership in a company? Wow. Um, I'm going to say my first lean leadership roles, I didn't have a lot of difficulty. I was very, very blessed um, from Mary, who pulled me along, and from a, a senior vice president named Dan Meek, who actually supported Mary as a leader and myself as well. So my Kodak days, the number of opportunities and places I had to go and work were um, innumerable. And it was just a fantastic, fantastic experience to be mentored by Shinji Jitsu Sensei, by Mary, and, and supported by Dan. In other places where I've worked, though, it can be complicated. The thing I think is the most struggle is the unwillingness to change. People don't even recognize that they're unwilling. They think they're willing. They say they're willing. But their feet are in the cement, as the Sensei used to say and you have trouble pulling them along. So I would say one of the biggest struggles is figuring out how to unlock the formula to get the local business leaders to be willing to try things differently and give their people the opportunity to try things differently, uh, to learn and fail forward and grow the business. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And actually, this leads right to the next question is, how can a coach help a woman leverage her lean career? Well, I'd say first of all, by being there. Um, second of all, by willingly teaching, helping, supporting. As a, as a coach, truly giving the, a student, right, the coachee, the opportunity to learn, try, fail, safely fail, but fail, right? We learn more from our failures than we do from our successes. Um, that's, that's just true from my perspective. So letting people struggle a little bit in a safe environment where they're not going to get any negative consequence from that, but they're going to get all the learning. I think that's some of the best gifts that a coach can give um, their student is an opportunity to stretch and feel safe and supported. 
And I'm going to add a little personal story in from Leslie being my first lean teacher and coach here is that I was, I was basically, before I met Leslie, learning on my own and trying out all different kinds of things on my own. I was reading books and then I was working on real problems in the business and some things worked as I thought that they would. Lots of things worked as I thought. It didn't work as I thought that they were. And then I met Leslie and Leslie and I, even though Leslie was like located geographically far away every day, we would email back and forth. We would talk. I would send Leslie um, the work that I was doing and Leslie would either send me back comments or sometimes she would say, call me. And then if she said, call me, I knew, oh my goodness, I've really gone wrong (laughs) (laughs) on this one. But Leslie made me, even like things like writing a control chart, she made me do all the calculations by hand, write it out by hand, send it to her. And then she would check it and she would help me learn how to do it better. And the truth is what happened was that knowing that whatever I was doing, Leslie was going to be there for me. It really made me confident in trying new things and in being able to try new things and not worrying, oh, I'm going to fail. I, you know, something terrible is going to happen because we were working on real business problems affecting customers. It really gave me the confidence later on in leadership roles and in other roles to really be able to to know what to do. And I was talking to someone, actually, Leslie, the other day about this. And uh, they said, when you asked Leslie, you know, what should you do? Leslie always answered the same thing. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer always is it depends. And when you have a coach to help you learn to how to think and how to learn, then you're confident that you can always understand what to do in that situation because it's going to depend, right? Absolutely. (laughs) So that's just a little story from Leslie and my learning and how important it is to have a coach. So here's our last question. Which soft skills do you think are important for women who want to learn to be lean leaders and how should they develop them? Oh, um, hmm. I would say one of the most important soft skills is learning how to help a team think through their problems together and then lead them to come to a conclusion. So there's some you know tool tools that you can use, but that idea of inquiring minds want to know, asking people questions that will cause them to think understanding how to read the room and when there's more that people want to say but they're afraid to say it and then finding ways to tease those answers out of them because those may be the most important pieces of information you get from that entire interaction. I would say that is probably one of the most important soft skills and something that's very easy to practice. Even if you're not leading the room, watch the room. Think, right, how is the leader doing? How much is the person who's leading doing it the way I would do it? And how might I do it differently? And what would I do for my own approach to help others to get their voice in the room? Uh, You can practice that just inside your own head. And then when the opportunity comes to practice that outwardly, you'll feel more confident for having thought through those pieces of how do I get every person engaged and get all the ideas in the room? I can't tell you how many times Leslie took me with her to different places, to meetings she was having with vice presidents. And I was like a frontline entry level worker. And she took me with her to listen. Sometimes she said to me, don't say anything in this. (laughs) But to listen and learn by seeing what she was doing. And then later on in situations in which I was in that same situation, I could think back and think, oh, what would Leslie be doing in this situation? How can I now ask the same kind of question that Leslie was doing? And the truth is, I still think of those things today in many situations. I think back to those times where you took me along, Leslie, so I could learn. (laughs) 
I think, my friend, that that is the the model that that Mary taught me, and I think it served us well, and I think you serve many others well by modeling that same thing of helping other women get experiences that they would otherwise be denied just by simply taking them along to see. Well, thank you, and. That wraps it up for all of the questions that I have. So I would just like to, well, first of all, again, say thank you for teaching so many people. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching all of those who uh, are going to watch this episode. What final word of uh, words of wisdom do you have to leave us with today? Um, I would say as women who want to be leaders and lead, um, take your power. Think about the things that you know you're good at and put yourself out there just a little bit to ask for opportunities to demonstrate your skills and ability. Um, we are strong just inherently as women, stronger than we think we are, and take that and wear it well and go forward looking for opportunities and showing others what you're perfectly capable of doing. I love that. And if people want to reach out to you and talk with you directly, just as I get the opportunity <laughs> to do all the time, how can they find you? Well, they can absolutely find me on LinkedIn. Um, so they're welcome to reach out to me there on LinkedIn. Um, Karen is a great resource. If you can't find me on LinkedIn, you can always find me through Karen. Um, and also through the Love and Kindness Project Foundation that we work on together. Um, under Karen's great leadership, I am always happy to help people, tell people stories, support people, connect people. I have thousands of lean leaders, many, many women that are in my network that I'm more than delighted to make connections for folks. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, this is how we help each other um, take a leg up and all grow as women leaders and lean. Thank you so much, Leslie. <laughs> it's been a Pleasure having you on the show. And uh, before uh, we end the show today, I'm going to give everybody some of the insights that Leslie has shared with us. So insight number one, diversity is fundamental in companies. Everybody should have the opportunity to be part of projects. And we should make sure as leaders to give opportunities to people who don't necessarily have much space in the market yet, like women, like people who uh, may be more introverted and we don't notice them as much. So we need to set an example and change the mentality of teams. Insight number two, the lean principle is always to be available to listen to the team. So if you're a leader because people have ideas at all times, make sure that you are <laughs> Ending at least as much time listening as you are talking and probably more time listening is better. Insight number three, inspire the team to have freedom and learn more. Let them experiment, be there for them. Make sure that they feel safe to try out different things and know that as a leader, you have their back and you're going to be able to help them and correct them very kindly so they can learn more and go forward. Insight number four, the best way to inspire women is to let them practice, right? Make groups for them to gain confidence, solve real problems, work together. And women, if you don't have that at work, you can always get together and find ways to improve things in your home. The first project I ever did with Leslie's help was working on my laundry process. Insight number five. One mistake is to think there's a magical formula for people to learn lean overnight. That's just not so. A coach is going to really help you to learn from all of the different things you're practicing and doing and guide you and push you out of your comfort zone and nurture you along the way. It takes time to learn and it takes a coach. And of course, as I always say, it takes practice, 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 practice. And our last insight, insight number six, is learning how the team can solve problems together is one of the key skills of a lean leader. Bring people together, help them learn to work together, help them learn to 
get ideas and work their ideas together to solve a problem together. That's really one of the best things that you can do as a leader, which is going to give those people the skills that they need to move up further as leaders themselves. What, what a lot of learning. I'm going to say oh, <laughs> the, more than 10 years, Leslie and I have known each other. It's been a lot of learning. And as always, every time I talk to Leslie, I learn something new. So everybody, that's actually it for this week's episode of Cultura G Excelencia. Thank you for joining me and Leslie Hankler, my very first lean teacher today. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone next week when we're going to be talking about how to break down barriers to the rise of women in organization with more great women in lean. And until then, I hope you have a fabulous week filled with purpose, process improvement, and kindness. Bem pessoal, esse foi o quinto episódio do Cultura de Excelência. Muito obrigada se juntarem a mim e a Leslie Engler hoje. Espero ver todos vocês na semana que vem, onde vamos falar sobre como quebrar as barreiras para a essencial das mulheres na organização. Com mais uma mulher incrível no Lean. Até lá. Espero que você tenha uma semana fabulosa e cheia de propósitos melhores de processos e gentileza. Tchau, tchau, everybody!